Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of Both Barrels. I'm Byrne, this is my father Curtis. What are we doing today? We are making our family version of wassail. Wassail? It's that, that time of year. Yeah, right. We always make wassail. Sometimes we make so much wassail that we give bottles to friends. Yeah, right. It's something that's uh, good to share around. Yeah. And basically wassail is uh, another word, for, way of saying mulled wine. Mm -hmm. So we have spices and fruits and juices and wine and we put it all together and we just let it simmer for hours. So how do we get started? Well, I usually get started by either getting some nice Carlo Rossi sangria, which is nice and sweet to begin with. Right. Okay. Or um, some other wine. It doesn't necessarily have to be sweet. Yeah, almost any wine. Well, I wouldn't say almost any wine, but a lot of wines that are more uh, fruity in character will typically work well for this style. Right. Of and uh, I just like the Carlo Rossi because it's inexpensive, and I like these nice Carlo Rossi glass jugs. Yeah, they and are. We can very use nice. it to, to put the, the ale back in once we're done. Mm -hmm. So should we uh, get this going? The oven started them. Yeah, and I and I set it really low, and okay. I just let it cook for a very, very, very long time. Okay. So if I'm gonna set this, I'm gonna light it real quick, and then we just set it to oh about midway till it starts to boil. Okay. So what do you think? Or simmer. Four? Yeah, and then we'll turn it down. Okay. Okay. Now we have lots of different spices, and mm -hmm. there's lots of dis different recipes, but this is basically what we use. Mm -hmm. Okay, one thing we do is we take some 100% cranberry juice right. and we add that in there. Mm -hmm. It has a nice, wonderful tartness. Yep. And since we didn't have any apple cider, we're going to use 100% apple juice. Close enough. Close enough. Yeah. We get that poured in there. Then I usually add a fruit. Okay. And I have some blackberries and some. Red raspberries. Okay. Give the blackberries a bit of a squeeze to break them up a bit. Mm -hmm. They are going to be cooked down a lot. Yeah, they uh, get very, very mushy after. They a while. do. And that's kind of what you want. Right. And then we have all those nice red raspberries. Mm -hmm. May not be what is tradi traditionally used, but it's what I like. Yeah. Then I cut up an apple. Then we cut the orange. Mm -hmm. And do you want the peel or no? Yeah, the, the peel's nice. Then I cut the grapes in Individually. half. Individually. Well, I mean, there's no other way to cut a grape. Yeah, right. Just so they're nice and open. Now, a lot of people will use a basket like this mm -hmm. to put their spices yeah, in. Yeah, kind of drain the spices out a little bit. Right. Now, I, I usually, uh, I don't. I let, the, I let the spices just sit in with it, and I fish them all out at the end. And sometimes there's a little bit of, you know, spice grain at the bottom of the bottle. Right. But that's all right. We have a bunch of spices which are traditionally used. Right. And I use some that may not be normally used. First of all, we have some cinnamon there. Yeah, cinnamon sticks. And some star anise, some fall spice, and some clove. Mm -hmm. And there's some orange peels in there that came from. Uh, a mixture that I got that also has orange oil. Okay. And that adds a lot to it without adding any bitterness to it. Right. And I just pour that right in there. Mm -hmm. Have a little extra of those spices mm -hmm. put in the side. And then I put in four or five whole peppercorns. Doesn't sound like much, but it really does add a lot. I grate just a little bit of nutmeg. Not much, just a tiny bit. Now, the last thing I do is I grate in some ginger. Right. So, this won't go very fast because it's frozen solid, but that's the way I wanted it. Right. Because it grates really nice that way. Yeah. And, so, and then we have one last ingredient there. One last ingredient. And Usually I use Grand Marnier. Mm -hmm. Didn't have any Grand Marnier. And I just pour some in there. Mm -hmm. Doesn't have to be a lot. Once it comes to a little bit of a simmer, mm -hmm. I cover it and let it cook for hours. Right. And let everything just tumble around in there. Mm -hmm. Now, I like extra cinnamon, cinnamon in there, so I'm gonna shake just some just cinnamon. Just a little bit, not too much. Not too much. Yeah, and uh, is it a good idea to kind of start mixing it now, maybe? A little bit, just start getting those spices around. Mm -hmm. Now, like I said, this is gonna take hours. Hours and hours. Hours and hours. 
found the longer that you cook it, the better it gets. Yep. Take some of those orange peels out of there so it doesn't get too too citrusy. Yeah, after a while. After a while. Mm -hmm. Oh, one more thing I forgot. Since I didn't have any lemons, I always squirt just a bit of lemon juice in there. All right. Add some tang. Yeah. So, that's our wassail. Yep, we're uh, going to let this simmer for probably, well, probably a few hours now. That clock isn't accurate, but probably in about three hours we'll come back, taste it and check it out, uh, see how we like it. So we'll see in a little bit, probably. Okay, so what we do is we started the whole process. It's been simmering for a while. Mm -hmm. Not really fast simmer or anything else. So it's time to taste it. Mm -hmm. And we say, hmm, okay, spices are good. Don't think we really need to add much of anything. Mm -hmm. But I like to add honey. Mm -hmm. Just to sweeten it up a little Just bit Just to more. sweeten it up because it also adds a lot of richness to it. Right. So that looks like a lot of honey and it is, but that's okay because it's that festive time of year. Yep. And we'll just let that simmer mm -hmm. and come back later. Okay, so it's been steeping for about an hour. Yep, on low, right? Real low. Yep. You can just see tiny little bubbles. Yeah. We don't want any vigorous boiling or anything. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the oranges out at this point and I'm gonna set them aside. Now they have lots and lots and lots of wine in there, as you can see. But I don't want the bitterness of the rind to be in there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it out, and when these cools down, I'll squeeze some of that back in there. Now that it's simmered a while, mm -hmm. I'm going to start taking some of the fruit and spice out here. Try to get most of it out. So I'll just put that aside. And we'll let it simmer a little bit longer. Okay. And then we'll strain the rest of it through a nice little strainer into a funnel. Yeah. Put it in, back in the bottles and we're done. Yeah. One of the downsides of making wassail is even with the lid on, you get splatter all over the place. And it takes a while to clean up all that wine, but it's worth it. When it's done, serve it warm. Yeah, serve it warm. Uh, you can heat it up in the microwave if it's been sitting out for a little while and it's typically pretty good still. But yeah, warm, uh, the warmth in it, it's really nice to come in after a long day of like shoveling snow or something like that and just have some nice warm wassail. Now there's not going to be as much alcohol in it as people might think because a lot of it is boiled off. Mm -hmm. But there still will be alcohol in it. Yeah, there will still be some alcohol in it, so uh, be sure to drink this responsibly. Okay, now. Typically, this is uh, easier to do when there's two people involved, I think, right? Most of the time, we've got to be careful because this is hot and we don't want anybody to get burned. Right. So how long have we let this sit for then? Well, we've let it simmer for about four hours. Four hours? Okay. Just really slow simmer. You can see it's not like bubbling and boiling or anything like that. Mm -hmm. It's just so that everything blends together. Right. We have this decently sized funnel here. And to start out with, we're going to ladle some of this in. This makes me nervous. Yep. Probably okay though. Once we get it down to a safer point, we'll probably be able to pick up the pot and then uh, pour it in. And it probably will still be a little bit messy, but um, it won't be quite as time consuming as this is, obviously. We uh, actually added a little bit more orange or uh, apple juice to it because uh, the rind of the orange made it a little bit too bitter. So something to keep in mind is if you're using oranges, you want to try to make sure that they're fairly sweet um, and maybe don't leave them in quite as long as we did at first. Yeah, this time the oranges were really bitter. I don't know why. Mm -hmm. I sh probably should have tasted them before I used them. Yep. Last time we didn't have that problem. All right, everybody. So as we said earlier, making wassail is a pretty messy process, but when all is said and done, we had enough to fill three of these Carlo Rossi jugs, and we also had a little bit of enough for my father and I to share some. So let's give it a taste test. Mmm, perfect. It's really nice. Uh, perfect for the holiday season. Uh, and that's why we make it. So yep. we have it for our friends and family. Yep. So once again, I am Burn. This is Curtis. We are both barrels. 
If you enjoyed watching this, be sure to give us a like, be sure to subscribe, comment if you have any questions about this process, share this video around if you liked it, and have a happy holidays.